Welcome to this special, special edition here on Community Channel 6. I am now in a boat on the Telescope Beach. I'm about to enter into a CMOS project done by one Will and Andrews. Can't swim, have on my life jacket. So right now I'm going to enter into the seawater so that we can all learn why he got started, how it's done, the duration period, and what happens with the end product. Oh yes, Lord Jesus. So right now I'm in the water. I'm actually within the CMOS project with Will and Andrews. And Will and, tell us a bit about why is it you got involved in this project? Well, it's a project which nobody in Grenada really look up to what's doing. So I decided I was in Union Island with the people who are doing the same thing. So I decided I'll try it in Grenada too and see how it will work. So how long since you actually started it? Well, it was since August last year, 2011. Yeah, and now. But what happened is that I was not really deep into it at the time because I wasn't in Grenada for a long time. I used to be in and out. So, you know, as I come back now, I decided I'm going to get more serious into it. Is it that you had to seek permission to come and use this aspect of the beach? Yes, oh. I had to. From the fisheries division, I had to do that. And then to get some conference from the police so that anybody involved getting in, coming and interfering, like behind my back, someone may come and steal it, then the police could take a step towards it. So before you show me all about the planting of it and so um, what are the, the raw materials that you have to use? Because I'm seeing a whole set of plastic bottles, I'm seeing styrofoam. <laughs> yeah, well the materials are very simple things. But we start with tires, like in the water. We got tires with cement in it for the, the anchor to hold the, the ropes in place. Then we make, as you may see, Within this, we have the, the ropes, the main ropes along the edge where you see the styrofoam and the buoys. Then we have that and we put the ropes across and put the, the little pieces, little holes, like those here. Put them underneath to tie the seamoss onto it and then the bottles are to keep it float. Because the seamoss need both the sunlight and the water to grow. So, which leads me to ask, you know, so is it that you go and dive for these and uh, how do you separate it to put it, you know, to start the process of, of it growing and so? No, this, we didn't die for it. This came from Venezuela. It came in from Venezuela. So I don't know we, how they got it from the first case. I don't know where it will spring from, but it came from Venezuela. And we do it now like this. Plant it on the rope and it grow. If you go to the bottoms, it wouldn't grow. It must be a little way up the water to get the sunlight so that it could perform very well. So, okay, for instance, when we plant today, how long before we can reap? Well, the period, the maximum time is two months, eight weeks, and you should be able to harvest after eight weeks. Yeah. So what I do, I put in like every two weeks, I plant some, so I'll always have, so whenever the market come, I'll always have the product I've never been out of. <laughs> Someone planting CMOS, I know a lot of guys like CMOS. Um, did you have any problems with theft because it's, it's just in the wide open water anyone come bathing or so can just harvest well as i said in the in the earlier on like early last year after the carnival season i had a lot of people ripping it off it's only now as i'm here now more regular and i have everything in place so the police looking out for it and everything nobody really interfering with it right now but they used to rob me off a lot yeah well for now it's okay for now so mark it is it, are you growing it for the local market or you have established on the outside? Well, I really, right now I'm dealing with the local market. I'm not, I'm not yet hooked up with the outside market. Well, I'm just trying to get some more because the market is not really there as yet. I don't have the market as yet, but you know, we're growing the stuff. We may get a few pounds sell now, but later on, you know, when people get to know more about it, then they might get into it a little more. You said this particular one, I like the feel though, it came out of Venezuela, but do you get the same taste as the one that the, the, the normal one here that the fishermen... Yes, you get pretty nice taste. Well, you'll have a taste yourself in a while, but it, it's a nice taste. It's, I don't see the difference in the taste, but the only thing is that this one yields much more than the one we have here. You use a little portion of this and you make a big, a wide amount of drinks with it which you gotta use like one ounce of the local one mm -hmm. to make maybe a two liter bottle of drink but when you use half ounce of this you might get three liter yeah mm -hmm. so 
It's very good. So apart, is it that you control for yourself or you have others working with you to come to help you to plant and harvest and so? We have others. I have others. But right now, they're out at sea. Yeah. Is Andrew and Associates. Yeah, well, Andrew and Associates, Simos Cultivation. Yeah, so we have other people involved. But right now, they're not here with me. They're out at sea. So then, I'm here doing that with you. For now. So, people who see it, what has the the response being from them to this particular project? Well, people say it's it's a good project. The first time, a lot of people say it's the first time they ever see that. Never seen sea moss growing so close off the surface. It's the first time they see people planting sea moss. A lot of people say they never knew about people planting sea moss. They knew about diving sea moss. So this is like a new something to a lot of them. Pull it up like this. What my grandfather teach me to make and loops. I just call it a and loops. <laughs> Pull it like this, see? And then you draw the string down. Oops! Draw it too tight. I draw it too tight. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so I'll do an, an, an next piece of it. Right. They mustn't draw it tight. <laughs> you get that? Then you just try it. Yeah, that's See? So I've just planted. That's the thing. What do you need to do? Yeah, it's good enough, isn't it? Are there specific types of sea moss growing here in, in in this particular project? Yes, there is. As well, this one you just planted here. Mm -hmm. This one is called the cotton eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a, the very thick one. We have another form of the cotton eye, but they call it the yukuma. It's a very slimmer one, but they call it the yukuma. But it's something. It's like the cousin of the cotton eye, then. But okay. yeah, but it's not as fat as this. But it's a very nice one too. So I'll show it to you in a while. But the one you just finished plant is called the cotton eye. Okay, so right now we're going to the cousin of the cotton eye. What a fish! Um Andrew, we buy a different set of sea Tell us about this particular kind and where did it come from? But this one here is called the Yukuma. This one come originally come from St. Lucia. Yeah. It's something, well as they say, it's like the, the cousin of the cotton eye. Well as you see, it's not as fat as the cotton eye. But you know, it's a very nice sea If you look at it, you never... I've never seen this anywhere in Grenada, so, so I don't... As I tell you, from St. Lucia, I don't know where it really spring from, <laughs> but it's a very nice product, just as the other one. It do just about the same, like the, the cotton eye. You use a little piece, and you get a wide amount of drinks from it. Okay. Yeah. So the the process of planting this one is it the same as the the previous one, or there's a different method involved? There is a different method involved in this one. As you can see here, the ropes. If you look at it, we and plot the roof and we sew it in between the ropes right because when you plant it when you tie it onto the string like the other one you don't perform too well you know like it busts off the string the process for this one how long will this one take well this one now this one do like like i would say two months it take a long time you don't perform well here but back in union island where they do it we are we are learned about it. I find it perform much better in the water all day. How does it come to Grenada in terms of packaging it? Just as you see it in a, in a tub, 
It remains fresh. It could at least stay fresh for a day or two. A day and a half, say a day and a half. Out of water. Yeah, it's still fresh in a cool place. How early do you enter the water to see after the sea moss? And how long do you take in terms of caring and, and so forth? Is it a lot of work or minor work? Well, it, it's a lot of work. But when you say early, we go according to the tide. When the tide low, we go and we do what we have to do. Sometimes it takes us about four hours in the day just for cleaning and scraping the bottles and we might have to replant and so on. So it takes a little bit of time, so about four or five hours a day to, to get it done. So it's, it's definitely not a simple task. It's not a simple task, but it's not, remind you, it's not every day, you know, like once every week we do that task. We may go through it, sometimes twice a week we go through it. But it's just to check to make sure any cut off and to put back and whatnot. But for cleaning, it's like once a week. Now that we're out of the water, tell me what is the next process after we harvest the sea moss? What is done next with it? Well, we put it underneath the plastic for sweating, but now I don't have the plastic here with me to show you exactly how we do it, but you spread a piece of plastic on the ground then you put the sea moss on top of it and fold it up and cover it, fold up all the ends so no air wouldn't be able to get through it. And you leave it for maybe about two, three hours in the sun and then it became white. And after that, you take it off the plastic and you put it out. You can put it out and then you see it dry. When it comes like this, you get it dry and you get a nice color like this. When it dry, golden brown. After drying. And then you, you, you pack it up. You can pack it up like this to, to look for the market. Well, you see, I don't get the labels as yet to, to do it. So label it out, but for so we just do a little silver still. And then we, we make the drink from it, which is like here. We make this drink here. This is the one we have the milk in this one here. And this here is the milk less. What happened is some people want the they, they want to make the drink, but they don't really know how to get around doing it. Okay. Yeah, so after taking the dry product like this. You use a little lime and you soak it for about five minutes in the lime and then you take it off, you put it in the pot with your water, you put in a little spice, a little clove, your nutmeg and if not too little bay leaf and you boil it in about 10 minutes time it melts out and you strain it off and then you mix it you know you can put a little essence and a little bitters in it and sweeten it to your own likeness whether with milk or without milk. And then you have a drink. Yeah. So how far do you intend to take this this project? Well, I intend to go far away, you know. As you see, it's just the beginning now, and then it's a bit slow for me right now because I don't have market to say that I could move up yet to another level. But I want to go right into the, the drink-making business, start making the drinks, bottling it out, and selling it even for business places, you know, sell it by the cases or so. So that's what, I, that's what I really aim in. But for now, I just go into the, the dry products. You told me you learned um, about the planting and so from Union Island. Is it only the drink alone? It, it, the, the raw materials can be used to make or they have other products that can be derived from the sea moss? It have a lot of products can derive from it. You can make even, um, like you make the little cake, you make uh, forge with it, you make jam. You make um, turnover, like we, some people call it turnover, some say cut cake. You do all the things with it. You know, a lot of different things you could do with so it. There is potential for the sea moss. And another thing is, it good, the gel from the sea moss. Like you boil a piece of this and you just use the gel and you could grease your skin with it. Yeah, it's good for like rash and all the little things. Yeah, it's very good. So in terms of the, the fisheries department and so on, um, 
what do they have to say to this innovative project? Because it seems to be the first of its kind here. It's not really the first of its kind. No. They themselves tried it before and well the people they tough it out, they tough it all so they give up on it. But now as um as I trying it here now, they're working along with me to make sure that I achieve what I really want to achieve, you know? So they're working with me side by side to see that it's been done properly. We've learned everything that we need to know about the whole CMOS project in terms of planting the CMOS, how long it, it would take to grow, harvesting, preparation, and the final product. Before I say goodbye to you, I just want to taste the CMOS without the milk. If I drank it, you can drink it too. Until next time on Community Channel 6, I'm Sherry Noel. Thanking you very much for viewing.